Hey guys, welcome back. A couple weeks ago, I did a video on the topic, what is book value? And in that video, I talked briefly about tangible book value. In today's video, we're gonna delve a little bit deeper into tangible book value, the difference between it and book value. And more importantly, as a retail investor, this video will help you understand when is tangible book value useful? When is it not useful? And how do we use it maybe to compare one company to another? So if that is something that you might be interested in, stick around. Let's get right into it. In the last video on book value, we went over how book value is equal to shareholders equity on the balance sheet, which is essentially total assets minus total liabilities on the balance sheet. And so today we're going to talk a little bit more in detail. How is tangible book value different than book value? And very simply, tangible book value differs from book value in one key way, and that is that we exclude the intangible assets when we are creating the definition of tangible book value. And as I have listed here on the slide, those intangible assets that we are going to exclude include intellectual property, copyrights, patents, trademarks, and goodwill. A couple of key things that you should know, the key takeaways when we're looking at book value or tangible book value, and maybe doing comparisons between one company and another is that book value and tangible book value should only be used to compare companies in the same sector. Another thing to know is that book value and tangible book value are not particularly useful in analyzing companies, for example, in the tech sector where the bulk of their assets are intellectual property. And the final thing that I want you to remember as a key takeaway is book value and tangible book value should normally not be your primary metric for evaluating or valuing a company. Normally we're using things like price to earnings, return on equity, return on assets. How is the company using its capital to deliver value to shareholders, return on that capital? And the exception might be if we're looking at a company where the market cap is lower than the book value or the market cap is lower than the tangible book value, then you might have a value play that you need to do a little bit more analysis on. If you have a company where the book value is over the market cap, then we need to focus on things like earnings, return on equity, return on assets. To summarize, when you're looking at profitable companies, you're most often going to find that the share price out there in the market is a factor of its earnings or its return on equity. Look at the things like price to earnings ratio. Does the share price make sense compared to the earnings of the company or the return on equity of the company. You'll probably find that for most of the companies, the PE ratio and the ROE line up and they make very good sense when you're comparing one company to another in the same sector. And you might find that the book value or the tangible book value has no relation to the price of the stock in the market because these profitable companies are trading based off of their earnings. So if you're dealing with a profitable company, I want you to look at earnings and return on equity and not focus so much on book value or tangible book value. It's going to give you a very misleading result. You might be wondering, why am I saying that book value or tangible book value might be misleading? Well, if we look at the definition of what is tangible book value, it is essentially what shareholders could expect to receive if the company was liquidated, if it went bankrupt. And when we're talking about profitable companies, we're not worried typically about bankruptcy valuations of the assets. As we just discussed on that key takeaways slide, when do we use tangible book value? Well, we might use it as a supplement to the valuation work that we did looking at things like return on invested capital, discounted cash flow, price to earnings, return on equity, tangible book value for profitable companies becomes more of a secondary or supplemental valuation metric. You'll find that it's most commonly applied in the industrial sector, banks, and the retail industry, not so much in the tech sector. Just to get the formula up on the screen here of how we calculate tangible book value, we have our total assets minus total liabilities. That equals shareholders equity or the book value. 
We then go back up to the asset section, find all the intangibles and subtract those out. That gives us our tangible book value of the company. A related definition that you might come across is the tangible book value per share. That is the company's tangible book value divided by the number of shares that are outstanding. As investors, when would we normally look at something like book value or tangible book value? Mostly if we're looking for value investment plays, and that would be defined as a company where the market cap is lower than the book value or the tangible book value. Remember back in 2020, GameStop was famously a value play where the market cap was under the book value of the company. If you have a thesis where the company is going to then turn around and maybe earnings are going to increase, that might be an opportunity to pick up a potentially undervalued company. Of course, as we're doing value investing analysis, we need to look at a lot of other things besides book value or tangible book value relative to market cap. But if we find one where the market cap is lower than the book value, then maybe we have an interesting company to start doing further research on. Maybe we have an undervalued company that other folks have not discovered yet. If the market cap on the other hand is greater than the book value, then I'm going to focus on more important things that tell me how is the company performing? Return on assets, return on equity, return on invested capital, price to earnings, or something like a discounted cash flow model. When the market cap is higher than the book value, those would be much more appropriate ratios or valuation metrics to look at in analyzing your company. We talked about how to calculate the tangible book value of a company. We talked about how to calculate the tangible book value per share. There is also a ratio that we can look at. Most commonly people look at price to book, but you can calculate price to tangible book value also. And that is going to be the definition highlighted in green here on the slide. Market cap divided by the tangible book value will give you your price to TBV ratio. It's just really a quick way to calculate market cap relative to the tangible book value. If the P to TBV ratio is less than one, you might have an undervalued company. If it is greater than one, then you're probably going to want to look at other things like, as I have said many times in this video, price to earnings, return on equity, discounted cash flows, common ways that most investors use to analyze profitable companies. As we wrap up this video, one thing that I really want you to remember is if you're looking at tangible book value or book value of a company, it's most likely because you have some concern that the company is going to be liquidated or go bankrupt. And you wanna know what is a fair price to pay for these shares in the event that a company goes bankrupt. If I'm worried that the company that I'm looking at might go bankrupt, then I want to know what is the book value compared to the market price of those shares out there. And ideally, if I'm worried about that bankruptcy, I want that share price to be under book value to give me some margin of safety. On the other hand, if you're analyzing a company that has no bankruptcy risk, then book value is probably not something you want to waste your time looking at. You need to focus on things that matter, things that everybody on Wall Street is looking at, returns, return on equity, return on assets, return on invested capital. What is the price in the market relative to the earnings of the company? When you can look at those return ratios or the price to earnings ratios, then you have a way to value or compare a company. For profitable companies with earnings, these are the ratios that matter when you're comparing one company to another. Does the PE ratio, the ROA, the ROE make sense for the company that you're looking at when you compare it to its peers? Look at those things and see how they stack up if you're looking at a profitable company with no bankruptcy risk. I hope this makes sense. Book value and tangible book value do not matter for profitable companies that have no risk of bankruptcy. It is the wrong thing to focus on. Thanks for hanging out with me all the way to the end. I hope you guys got some value out of this. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. I love to hear from you guys. I am Tony DeNaro and I will see ya on the next video.